9 million acres of forest, 1,700 miles of continuous shoreline, 4,300 lakes, 12,000 miles of streams, more than 300 waterfalls, 15 counties, two time zones, and one area code. Welcome to the Upper Peninsula. Welcome to 906 Outdoors. This time of year, most of the people I know are hanging off the side of a tree somewhere in the woods or sneaking through the brush with a shotgun in their hands, or maybe hunkered down in a duck blind. But there's one person I know that I can always count on being in a boat with a rod in his hand, hunting for smallmouth. My good friend, smallmouth fishing guide, Mike Mladnik. If you recall, my history with Mike goes back to my first TV show, Fishing with Northwoods Guide, Mike Mladnik. So I always look forward to the opportunity to spend a day on the water, catching up on what's new, laughing about old stories. I recently spent a beautiful fall day on the water with Mike and took the opportunity to learn a bit about fall fishing, what to use and when to use it. Didn't take long, did it? Not a big fish, but on the case minnow, they catch all kinds of fish. Better fish than I thought. Look at that, four inch case minnow, sinking minnow. But when using these uh, minnow baits, this is a case sinking minnow. Got a three aught wide gap hook. The bottom of the minnow has a little slit. You go through about a quarter of an inch, run it through. And you stick that inside the slot and back up the minnow a little bit because what you want it to do is just skin hook it on the top of the minnow. But the skin hook part is very important. If you stick it out too far, then you're going to get snagged up on any weed. But if you bury it into the uh, plastic, a lot of times, you, maybe that split second, you lose a little bit, you get a better hook set with the hook being skin hooked than if it was buried. Basically, if you bury the hook, you'll never get snagged. But you might lose a few fish but if you just skin hook it a little bit, you might occasionally pick up a weed or two, but you're going to have a better hooking percentage with it. One thing about fishing on a river in the fall, it's fun in the spring, it's fun in the summer. Like, you know, take the summer, for example. I can go out in the summer, catch a lot of fish, a lot of numbers of fish, but I don't catch a lot of real big fish. But at this time of the year in the fall, when you catch a good-sized fish, whether it's a smallmouth or a pike or a walleye for that matter, there's a pretty good odds there's more big fish around. So what I do in the fall that's different is I spend more time in a specific area. In the summer, I'm moving a lot. In the spring, I'm moving a lot. A lot of times in the spring, you have to really work hard to find fish. But in the fall, when you find a fish, a big fish, stick there and you want to fish it for a long period of time because I guarantee there's more than just one fish there. They were biting my minnow bait short, so I put on a minnow and right away I catch a fish, nothing to it. They bite short on one bait, you switch baits and catch them. Don't know how big he is yet. You hear that drag sound, that means it's a decent fish. Whoa! Hard to beat. River smallmouth fishing in the fall, I'll tell you that. <laughs> what a dandy. This is your typical fall river smallmouth. Beautiful color. I love it. Hook up another minnow. It's important when you hook these chubs is to keep them as lively as possible. I'm using a number two, two aught kale hook. Notice how I just go through the lips. If I were to go through the head, it had killed that minnow and it wouldn't be as effective. This guy's all rigged up and ready to go catch another big smallmouth. There we go again. Oh, big minnow, big fish. At least we hope. A lot of people think smallmouth aren't as active in the late 
next fall when the water gets colder, but believe me, a smallmouth is always a smallmouth. That guy's a tail walker there, huh? <laughs> I love it. Using that. That's a fat fish. These fish in the fall, I'd have caught that fish about a month ago. I bet this fish weighs about three quarters of a pound, half a pound more. Just a wonderful Menominee River smallmouth. What a nice, around 18 inches or so. Fall is here. Guess what? I'm catching a ton of fish. And I'm catching big fish. Oh, what nice fish. Why am I catching big fish? Because I'm very versatile in the way that I fish. I'm prepared for anything. I love catching smallmouth in this fall. Actually, any time of the year I love catching them. My favorite bait in the fall, I like to use these uh, minnow type baits, plastic minnow baits, five inch baits, walleye I'll hit them even, but primarily they're bass baits, pike I'll hit them, you get a wide variety of different types of fish, they're easy to use, you rig them weedless on a wide color. gap hook, you ain't all that long but it sure got a belly on them. You can throw them in weeds, you can throw them around rocks, you can throw them tight to wood cover and they're just dynamite catching uh, all variety of different types of fish. Well they were in the, all those fish were holding deep deeper in the fog and what happened now the sun comes out the bait fish start moving into the shallow water start getting a little more aggressive and then these big bass like this they get into the shallow water too so the sun is a good thing. Fog it just gets in the hold real tight they don't move much. That sun gets them to move. The opposite of what most people think. Here, oh, it's a big, nice pike. Well, it's a fish. It's one thing about fishing in a river, you never know what you're going to catch, that's for sure. Oh, that ain't a bad pike. Beautiful fish. Chunky bugger. We're going to have to move, though, because he's going to scare my bass out of this spot. Obviously, uh, you're used to catching northern pike, you're used to getting bit off a lot. But one thing, even if that pike wouldn't have bit me off, this is only 10 pound test line. Whenever you catch a nice pike like that, I always cut the line and retie anyway. But what you want to do when you retie is cut back at least three feet or so, two, three feet. Get down to some fresh line. Trust me, if you don't retie, you're going to end up getting getting a big bass on or another big pike and a line of break right off. Oh, that guy hit that hard. You know, I like to catch them with the minnow, but something about using these minnow baits, you, you get a more vicious strike and almost visual like that fish. I just watched him. He'd come up and smoke that. That's what it's all about. Oh, man. They always tell us the people I catch have caught a million of these things over my life and I love every one of them. Another thing that's been happening today is typical of the fall is I'm not getting a lot of short strikes. These fish are on this bait and bam, they're hammering it and they're off and running. Oh well, that's fishing as they say. Summertime you come out here some days and they're biting kind of light. You don't know if it's a small fish or you're just not setting the hook right. But you get into the fall like this those fish, they want it. If you get to the fish, there's not too much short strike. It's a bam, hard hit. You, if you set a, get a good hook set, you got the fish. It's the advantage of a nice, sharp hook. You don't miss as many fish. Decent fish. Porky little bugger. What I do when I first cast it out, I tighten my line up and I just give it a couple of quick twitches and then I let it sink. When you're not doing anything, that bait is sinking I let it sink for maybe five or ten seconds and then I tighten up and I just give it a couple more twitches and I let it sit. What happens is those twitches, what attracts the fish, but they hit it when that bait is dropping. So you don't want to twitch it continuously. You might get a lot of shorter strikes, but when that minnow just 
eases itself down, just flutters down, that's when the fish comes up and grabs it. And again, these minnow baits, they sure strike it hard. And you just hold on. I did snag them. That's what happens when you get a good hook set, see? Good thing we're letting these go, because you know, you legally couldn't keep this fish. Because this is a fouled hook fish. Even though I didn't intentionally try to snag them. Rapid River Knife Works is the largest custom knife factory showroom in Michigan. The 10,000 square foot showroom is awesome. Hunting knives, pocket knives, and kitchen knives. Watch your custom knife being made and engraved. Free laser engraving with your personal message or company logo. Lifetime warranty on every knife and free sharpening. Plus, visit Rapid River Knife Works gift shop for Stormy Cromer and RRK gear. Bring the family and visit Rapid River Knife Works today. My favorite fall smallmouth bait, if I had a, somebody asked me, you're going on the river, even a lake for that matter, I can only pick one bait with me, what would it be? Right, this bait right here, the case sinking shad. It's a five inch bait, a lot of, it's a lot of plastic minnow imitation baits like this on the market, but one thing, they don't sink. This bait sinks. You cast it, twitch it a little bit, let it sink, and it drives a smallmouth wild. If I was just using one that I twitched across the surface, I'd catch fish, but I wouldn't catch as many big fish. This bait is just dynamite with big fish. That uh, case sinking shad is an excellent bait, but sometimes, you know, you get a cold front, fish are a little bit finicky. I got a solution. I dropped down to the sinking minnow, which is about a that's three and a half inch bait. It's just fantastic. Those light bites, all of a sudden I got fish. So I take my casting rod with my 10 pound fluorocarbon, work the shad on there, and I take my spinning rod. Now I've got some eight pound fluorocarbon line, and I've got the uh, sinking minnow, and I've got both bases covered. Fish are a little bit more aggressive. They just pound the shad, but if the bite lightens up a little bit, which happens when you fish, drop down, use the case, sinking minnow and you'll continue to catch fish. Oh yeah, nice. Not, not as big as I thought again, but. Now watch that hook. Nice chunky bugger. On the old minnow bay, case minnow here. Another bait that's very deadly in the fall is crankbaits. Crankbaits are a lot of people's favorite fall bait. This is shallow running crankbait, deep diving crankbaits. Sometimes in the fall, an angler will have a trouble to go out. I can't find any fish. Like a lot of times, I can go out to my favorite spot, boom, 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 catching fish. But in the fall, fish can be a little scattered. When you find them, you can find a ton of them, but a crankbait is the best bait in the fall, a search bait to find active fish. When you find them with the crankbait, keep fishing. Maybe all of a sudden then they stop, well then switch over to a soft plastic bait. But you know how I catch most of the big fish in the fall, whether it's smallmouth, muskies, pike. I gotta be honest with you, you could have a tackle box full of a ton of lures, but it's live bait, particularly large minnows. You're going fishing in the fall, whatever fish you're looking for, if you want a trophy fish, make sure you bring some minnows along because that's the best all around bait in the fall. I just threw it out and I got a fish on right away. Look at that. That didn't take long. <laughs> this is fun. all toads today. Some days you get some smaller fish mixed in, but these are pretty much all big toads. Look at that. Oh, what a dandy, huh? Look at how fat. Look at that belly. 
pretty much a fall thing, especially this size. Now in the spring of the year, I use a lot of minnows. But I'm, you know, it's cold water thing more than anything, but in the spring I use them. I don't use them in the summer, but uh, these fish are grouping up, stacking up big time. They're putting on the feed bag and they just love these big, this is a big four inch red tail chub. Pretty hard to beat it. The more we get in the fall, the colder the water gets, the more the minnow bite is on. Another one. That one took a lot longer. It took about maybe a minute and a half, two minutes for that one. Little guy. But you know, it's good to see these small ones in here because if they are all 18, 19 inches, that might not be good for a couple years down the line. But their natural reproduction of this river is just, Menominee here is just excellent. So there's going to be plenty to go in, oh, in about five, six years. That guy be 18 inches. Can we be so lucky to catch another one right away again? Oh yeah! Little deeper, catch a fish. Go in the shallow weeds, we catch a fish. This is not a really that big of a fish. It's just a 17 incher, but. Are they fat? These are fat fish. Look at that, huh? Beautiful river falls momo. Well, archery season is here, and the importance of having ourselves and our gear ready cannot be overstated. I talked with Randy Gustafson of Northwoods Wilderness Outfitters in Iron Mountain to get some pointers on things we can do to make sure we're ready for the hunt. Of course, you want to check your bow over, make sure everything's good. Compound bows, go around, tighten up all the little screws. Then, of course, look the cables over, the string, make sure the serving is good. Uh, guys that are using a, a peep sight with the tube, $2, replace the tube. It's a simple thing to do every year, but if that breaks, your tube, your peep sight will, will, will spin, it won't be lined up, and, and you won't be able to hunt. Um, you know, lube your uh, string, wax your string good, your cables. On the compounds, check your servings around the pulleys. Make sure that, you know, they're not cracked, ready to break. Double check your release, make sure that's working good. Crossbows, they're a little bit more complicated. A lot more things to watch for a little bit more maintenance intensive. Um, this crossbow here, uh, the fella had it hanging in his garage. It looks like a mouse chewed on his cable. So now he's gonna have to have his cables replaced. Usually what we like to do when we do that is we'll put string and cables on so that it's a match set and everything's timed and it's, and it's, it's gonna shoot correctly. Uh, on this, this crossbow right here, the, the rail wasn't waxed properly all the time and he wore through his serving. You can see that it wore through and it needs to be reserved now. That, that isn't a real big deal, but it has to be done. Make sure you wax your string, lube your cables. On the crossbows, the compound crossbows, that have, you have to put a little bit of lube in here. This, this crossbow happens to have a slide in here. You can see where the cables go through the plastic slide, and that's good. But you, it still has to be lubed up. Uh, on, on the cheaper ones, that, that, this cable is rubbing on the top of this cable slot and that it's really critical that those be lubed up really, really well or you'll wear through the cables. And if this breaks and blows apart, it's going to be a really expensive repair. It could break a limb. Uh, the other thing on the crossbow is it's super important that you tighten all of the bolts. Make sure everything's tight. Make sure that these bolts are tight. This is tight. Make sure your limb bolts are tight. Make sure that nothing's vibrating, going to rattle loose. And then of course on your scope, 
you want to make sure that all everything is really tight. There's a tremendous amount of force when you fire a crossbow, a lot of vibration. That's where this stuff can come loose. So it's just real simple maintenance. The other thing you want to check out, and, and this is the most critical part of your complete outfit, is your arrow. Uh, arrow and broadhead are what actually kills the animal. Every bow out there, whether it's a longbow, recurve, compound, crossbow, all they are is an arrow launcher. Some do it a little better than others, but that's what they do. They launch the arrow. The arrow is, is critical. It has to be a good quality. It's got to be well balanced. It's got to be tuned to the bow. There's more to arrows than just buying an arrow and, and putting a broadhead on it and going hunting. Um, we kind of pride ourselves in the fact that we know arrows. Uh, we, we love to help guys get their arrows fly correctly couple things you want to watch for. You'll notice that the broadhead is perfectly lined up with the veins. Everything is in line and that's critical. On a two blade broadhead what you want to do, you want to line it up so that both of the blades are lined up with the hen feathers or, or the two solid colored feathers. The other thing that you have to watch, and we run into this a lot with low end arrows coming from discount stores and whatnot, when you spin this arrow you'll notice that it spins perfectly true. There's no wobble to that arrow whatsoever. It's not gonna do this in flight. Everything is critical, very critical that you, you shoot really good arrows, really good broadheads, everything is balanced, um, and, and the right spine, the right length for your bow at, at <clears throat> your draw length and your poundage. It's, it's, there's a lot to arrows, a lot more than people think. And again, this is the most critical part of the whole outfit. This is what kills the animal. This has to fly extremely well or you're not going to get good groups. Um, you want a really good, super sharp broadhead. Again, doesn't matter what kind of bow you're using. It's just going to make a better shot, better kill, uh, better penetration. Um, and we, we really like the cut on contact. Uh, these three blade broadheads work extremely well on crossbows, by the way. Okay, one of the <clears throat> safest ways to unload or decock your crossbow is to shoot it. Decocking bolts are just, they're great. It's a super heavy shaft. Uh, you can get them with either the, the V-knock or the flat knock so that it'll work in any crossbow. It's got a super heavy tip on it and you just shoot it into the ground. You won't lose your arrow. You can unload your bow, it's super safe. Um, it, it's just, a, it was a really neat invention. Uh, we really push these with every crossbow we sell. It doesn't matter whether it's one of the Excalibur recurves or a Wicked Ridge or a 10 point. These things work really well. Mm -hmm.